for the Virgin Islands. We know a lot about what's going on yeah. in Florida, uh, but Virgin Islands has had some remarkable devastation. Yeah, it's unbelievable when you look at these images, Alan. We do know, uh, based on our reporting from inside the White House, that the team is considering here maybe getting President Trump out to the U.S. Virgin Islands to see some of the impact of Irma firsthand. It is not clear how far along those plans are or whether they will come to fruition, but we do know, as was confirmed in this briefing, that the president will visit Florida on Thursday. So we're looking ahead to that as well. How you and I are friends. Right, I like you yeah. a lot. We, we, have a, we have a nice relationship. Yeah, so I'm going to yeah. ask you a question that you probably weren't expecting, but I always want to ask you, who's the guy on your left? Because all I see is his shoulder all the time. Do you want me to I, I mean, it's it's a colleague of mine from another network who also sits in the front row with me. Is it my buddy, John? It's your buddy, John. All right. Say hi to John for me. I miss him. We uh, worked together for many years. I just didn't realize how tall he actually That's was. Uh, Allie, good to see you. Say, say hi to him for me. Thanks, Allie. Allie Jackson at the White House. All right. We are just literally starting to catch our breath after days of devastation in the southeast of the United States. At this point, what's left of Irma as a storm, hopefully, is just a memory, but people in northern Alabama are basically dealing with a rainstorm. It's a shadow of the thing that left a trail of destruction through the islands of the Caribbean, the Keys and large parts of Florida. Forty people are dead because of it, and millions are without power. At this point, it's a matter of recovery. Communities that have been closed off for days are just starting to open back up and the people who left for safety are coming back to ruin. A large majority of the homes in the Florida Keys have been severely damaged, many destroyed. Moody's Analytics estimates that Irma could end up costing $92 billion in damage, and that's just in the United States, just in the United States. I want to start this hour in the Florida Keys, which got hit hard. 90% of the houses there are damaged. A quarter of them have been destroyed. My colleague, Mariana Atencio, hopped on a helicopter earlier to get us a large-scale look at the devastation there.
Well, it wasn't just storm surges. Residents have been telling us about possible tornadoes in this area, and we just came to this place. This is off of Spanish Main here, and it does look like that telltale sign of tornadoes. You've got trees basically splayed in all different directions. You've got some that have fallen to the right, some that have fallen to the left, uh, and then you've got the damage to different homes. Then you have uh, where it skips homes, and then you've got utter devastation. I want to show you what I'm talking about right over there. Uh, see that? 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 flatbed trailer was actually a mobile home and that was on the other side of the fence so you've got these trailers right here these mobile homes that one was sitting right next to it on the other side of the fence that means that whatever happened here lifted it off the ground five to six feet over that fence and put it down right there on the street it's pretty remarkable something that has been bewildering right congressman where we were able to get our correspondent up in Kajo key in the florida keys then we're doing we're transitioning to the island damage, so we're doing Thank a quick you. hit with our our guy here on how bad the islands have been hit, and then we're coming your way. I'm right here. here. The first person to count. That's okay. right. Thanks. Thanks. Back to you, Alex. Uh, God, God, it's interesting. I didn't know this about the tornadoes, but but when you look at the the damage, the difference between Kajo Key, where you are, and Key West, or or certainly Key Largo, where you spent a lot of the time, it is so dramatic and so different that it was going through my mind as somebody who's covered a lot of various different types of storms that some of the destruction around you looks more tornado-like uh, than it does hurricane-like. Absolutely. This is a tiny island, 1,800 people live on it. 1,300 of them now are in Antigua. The other 500 are basically sheltering in place from the elements. We have some before and after images. We've been waiting to get these in. This is the before, and then as the line goes down, this is after. Wow, totally destroyed. All right, Congresswoman, you're coming up next right after mm -hmm. this. It's gonna take $300 million just to get that island back on its feet, but it's gonna take months. Next, St. Martin, half Dutch, half French. Am I hearing the program okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Here comes the Thank you. The French president is there. And I just want to confirm, you're in St. Croix? Yes, I am. Part of that island, okay. talking about 90, 95% destruction. Keep in mind the hospitals were destroyed. The local infrastructure was destroyed. The U.S. Virgin Islands also hit very hard. Yep. You have represented Plaskett on next. One of the things that they are dealing with is that the hospital in St. Thomas was basically destroyed. The good news there. Troops are on the way. We're talking about 5,000 troops from the Army, it sounds like, and 600 Marines. I'm really happy to hear that the Marines are headed in because it does look like a war zone. And you and I were talking about this earlier as we look at these aerials from uh, from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Water, water, water. Yeah. Needs fresh water. But not the kind you could drink. That's the important That's part. it. That's right. Yeah. But they need drinking water. Imagine trying to build a roof on a hospital in the Caribbean with no fresh water. Right. In, in hot weather, right. you need to bring workers in. Yep. Uh, supplies also are not readily available. When you have that kind of destruction, they don't keep stockpiles of the supplies that you need to rebuild, the, the metal, the, uh, the rebar, things like that. That's right. And keep in mind, we're talking about a place where 70% of the local law enforcement homes were destroyed. Yeah. Right. So you have the same thing during Hurricane Katrina, where you have local law enforcement who yeah. you're going to rely on in a time like this. They're trying to get back on their feet. NBC News Global Editor and my good friend Cal Perry, thank you for keeping up to speed on this side of the story because uh, we got it less, uh, you know, we got less of a storm, but they really got it in the Caribbean. Thank you very much, Cal. All right, I want to keep up the conversation about the devastation on some of these islands with somebody who knows this story like very few people. Here we go. Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett of the Virgin Islands has been keeping us up to speed on what's going on. She joins me now via Skype in St. Croix. Uh, Representative uh, Plaskett, thanks for being with us. You went down there before people could sort of get in. You went in with the Coast Guard. You had a look around uh, the Virgin Islands, including St. Thomas. Tell me what you know. Well, um, as you said, the Coast Guard were able to bring me from San Juan to the island of, and I went did an overview of St. Thomas, St. John, even going into the BVI and then landing on St. Thomas. I then, with my staff, you know, we got into an SUV and did several days uh, on th traversing through St. Thomas, meeting with government officials, um, our emergency management agency there, as well as Coast Guard, as you said, Department of Defense, Navy, Marines, um, our own local law enforcement, our National Guard, which is doing a tremendous job as well. Um, so talking with them about their work and how they were making the response. And then um, I went back to St. Croix, which is the island that I'm from, that island has now become the base camp 
for a lot of activities, not just in the U.S. Virgin Islands, but also offering support to our British counterparts, which are really close. Um, and then just yesterday, I was able to go with private, private boats, you know, individuals, ferry companies, um, business owners are taking boats and scuttling back and forth between the islands. As I told you guys this morning, it looks like a flotilla on the oceans between the islands of individuals going back and forth, bringing in people, and then not just taking water, as you talked about, which is tremendously important, diapers, um, generators, batteries to St. Thomas and to St. John. And what I saw on the ground was, as you saw physically, a lot of devastation. The need for generator belts and generators, batteries, trying to get things up and running, clearing roads, but a lot of organization on the part of local people. We've been through hurricanes before, and so everyone is really pitching in and working tremendously. And that's been a great, great help um, to the islands right now. So that's what we're working on here on the ground. Um, you know, I had a chance to talk yesterday evening with Leader Pelosi, had conversations with um, individuals on the Republican side as well to talk about tax relief. How are the islands going to be included? How's the Virgin Islands going to be included in tax relief and any additional FEMA support? And then discussions with even larger groups. Uh, I've had reach outs from people in Louisiana. New York City is here to support as well, and even foreign governments. You know, we've been owned by seven different countries before right. we were purchased by the United States, so speaking with them as well. Well, I, I'm glad for the global response. There is, however, the simple issue of logistics, right? We're talking, mm -hmm. I just talked to Halle Jackson about the fact that the president might be uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, making a trip in there, which I, I'm sure would be very heartening for people, but they are considering that they don't want logistical efforts drawn away by the president's visit. At the same time, we've got these uh, army uh, the troops coming in, the marine troops coming in. All of those things you listed, from gasoline to uh, fresh water to diapers to generators, uh, is that being coordinated by the National Guard or the Army or the Governor? Is there some sense of coordination because you don't have an easy supply chain getting into the Virgin Islands? You're right about that. I mean, the Coast Guard has been able to clear the waterways of sunken vessels and additional stuff. So <clears throat> it seems if you're looking at it, there's really uh, quite a bit of coordination, but there are levels of activity that are happening. The federal government is working with um, our local government. Um, to coordinate the efforts of, the, of, of those individuals. But then there's also an entire private sector that's working and coordinating and speaking with our government um, as well. Um, they, we have Virgin Islanders that are living throughout the country that are, have now been on the phone and they're coordinating efforts to bring cargo ships down and you know checking in with our local emergency management to find out what are the supplies you need. What are the things that need to be done right on the ground right now? Making sure that that stuff is manifested, inventoried, and then distributed, working with United Way, working with the Red Cross, and of course, working with local people. We have retired police officers that are coming back online, um, working with security to ensure that there's order and, and rule of law that's carried out in the distribution because people are really panicking and people have their emotions. Now we're also working on the other side, which is finding families on St. Croix. Um, people are opening up their homes to ensure that young people especially are able not to have their school interrupted because it's gonna take months before we even go back online um, with our uh, school system. And also trying to organize so that young people can come uh, to the states. We have many, many families that are in the states that are willing to open up their homes and so we're talking with them about how to get these young people up there so that school is not interrupted. As safe estimations, you know, St. John, all of our utility system, 100% is knocked out, is gone. And our um, power authority is working fear, fear, feverishly to bring that up online. And in St. Thomas, 70%. So we're really grateful that St. Croix did not have the kind of devastation that the other islands did to ensure that that's kept up. And um, we're, we're moving from there. But there is coordination, but you can see it from three tiers, from the federal yep. government providing support to local, and then the private sector connecting with local as well, so that we can take care of what needs to be done. It is an awful lot of work ahead for the people of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Congresswoman, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, but it's, it's uh, particularly good to see your face right Thank now. You. It gives us a lot of hope about um, our fellow countrymen in the Virgin Islands. Thank, Thank you, you again.
Uh, we'll keep a very close touch to you, and we won't forget uh, the people of the Virgin Islands Thanks and, so and much. the rest of the Caribbean okay. in the days to come. Thank you. Take care. All right. We All right, coming up, lawmakers from both sides. Congresswoman, thank you so thank much. You. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for your help. Thanks. Okay. For okay, we got CNN. Announcements with other products, including the Apple Watch. Uh, Apple can you turn the sound of the vibrate from the phone? Yeah. Yes, hi. Can you see me? Hi there. I can hear you, but I can't see your pictures yet. Mm. Um, okay, can you got me okay. now? Fantastic. Congresswoman, I can see you and I can hear you. I'm going to put you through to our um, control room. Stand by, please. Okay. Next, some dramatic before and after images of the region. It will really show you the damage and it will also show that it will take years to repair. Because, uh, also, Irma, they know.